plan today is to swap out the shift mechanism from what's in the car, the shift R111 from Enokinetic. What it's doing, and I've got it in other videos, is I think it's uh, rattling due to some kind of shaking in the transmission is getting transmitted all the way into the shifter. So from about 3,000 RPM to 5,000 RPM, which is exactly where you spend a lot of time uh, driving the car, I get a rattling noise. So what I've got is I've got the Dolomiti shifter, which is another really nicely machined uh, uh, set of, of hardware. It more closely mimics the stock shifter, so this is pretty similar to the uh, upgraded system in, in the Toyota Oasis. So I think 07 is when they started with, with the, the ball type uh, solution. But everything is very nicely machined out of aluminum and anodized. Uh, the base is anodized. The mechanism is very smooth. The shift reverse lockout in this version is similar to stock, uh, which is very different from what the Kinetic does with the cable. Basically, there's a rod that runs inside the main lever, and when you pull up on the collar, it moves this little cleat out of the way, and you can move it further over. So I'll let it go, get stopped, pull it up, can move further. So that's the way the reverse lockout works on, on this guy. The shift knob from the earlier car does not fit on this shift on this shifter because the threading, I think this this was if I'm if I remember right, this was a an M12 and it's an M10 stock on the 05. So this is actually the Dolomiti shift knob as well, which looks very similar to stock, so so it's uh, uh, pretty much looks stock and then you have to actually use the Lotus part number for this spring that regulates that so um, that's a thing you got to order the other so a couple other things with the Dolomiti shifter it is already and I don't know if this is going to show up but it's already canted uh, over to the passenger side the way the stock one is where the you know kinetic is is more vertical and this also has several positions for adjusting the throw of both the uh, shift gate and cross gate. So you can, you can adjust the uh, motion of this guy and that will adjust the, the distance. I'm going to try and keep it as close to stock as possible because I actually really like the stock motion. The other thing to note, um, the uh, Handbrake bridge is uh, very nicely made. There's, there, it's a lot of stainless steel uh, sheet and, and some nicely machined collars that will hold the brake handle in place. Um, but the thing that really is is in, is is kind of cool to note is that the block that holds the shift cables is a machined aluminum anodized as well piece with an all metal. So you can see the, the little collars there that are going to hold the cable. Uh, it, it's all metal. Where the stock piece is plastic, and then the Inokinetic uses the stock piece. So um, it, it's a really nice, high-quality high piece of uh, uh, material. Um, one other thing that's going to happen that will be a little bit easier is that the cable harness is going to route the way the stock cable harness routes, the Inokinetic kind of changes. It, it routes it the same mainly, but it runs it underneath the shift lever and it's kind of hard to, to manipulate to get under there. And I've got another video that was showing that the uh, brake handle was actually chafing on the shift cable. So um, in, in this setup, it should keep it kind of everything separate a little bit and we'll see. 
but my hope here is to get rid of that rattling um, and uh, basically what I hopefully there's just something in the in a kinetic that is uh, resonating at, at that frequency that the transmission is vibrating and it's making that rattling noise and, and hopefully um, you know this won't get rid of the vibration in the transmission but hopefully it won't rattle when that vibration happens we'll see uh, but uh, you know I can't lose here because this thing is is really beautiful so what I'll do is I'll go through the steps of uh, removal of the inakinetic and installation of the dolomiti and uh, make some notes real quick shot of the shifter uh, after use it's been I, I use a console on the car see the paint is kind of wearing this is I've always had a little bit of interference um, with the console and so the paint is chipping off there and it makes that I've shown it before a chipping sound everything everything is really solid and feels really good so I've got the con basically I've got the console off next the seats come out and then I'll start disassembling the emergency brake support the seats are out which is more difficult than pretty much any other car I've ever owned just because of access so uh, there's the shift R in place basically the steps of disassembly and I've got another video that shows how you assemble it um, but the brake support this, this bridge piece needs to be disassembled then the brake cable uh, the, the brake handle comes out and um, this little switch which activates the brake light uh, goes with it and I'll disconnect the cables and then um, then the, the shift mechanism should come out so it should be Pretty straightforward from here. We'll see. Um, basically, I have to take these screws out, undo uh, all of these screws, and then this half should the, the whole thing should lift out, and this half should come apart, and uh, should be all set. Um, let me let me make a note just for anybody who's got a shift shift R uh, about avoiding chafing the shift cables. So let me get over the other side of the car here. This is just for anybody who has the Shift R111 installed. What I found was that the top uh, shift cable, which is the, the shift cable, was getting chafed by the bottom of the emergency brake. And you just want to make sure that that shift cable is, is out of the path of the, the, that emergency brake. So, I tied the cable to the side of the bracket and uh, back here as well so just made sure it was low and to the side and uh, now it's not chafing um, but something to look out for. A couple of notes while disassembling the Shift R111 it's been a couple of years since I've had it on the car. The cross gate mechanism definitely has to come out to get the uh, cable harness out Basically, there's this bracket, which has a pass-through for the ca for the uh, cable harness, has these two screws on it. In order to get these two screws out, basically this screw is blocked by this cable. So you have to take the cross gate mechanism out, um, and then uh, and then you can take this bracket off, and then that releases the cable. Um, T taking a look at the shift R again, I mean, it, it is just such a nicely engineered uh, mechanism. So it's out. You can compare it a little bit to the Dolomiti. So there's the, the Dolomiti. Um, both extremely smooth. Both no play, very... Uh, high precision, you can tell. 
Um, again, the release mechanism. I, I actually do think the Shift R111 release mechanism is overly complicated. Um, this one, I think this is the way the, the 07 and, and newer shift mechanisms work. It's very simple, uh, much simpler than, than the little uh, uh, paddle mechanism on this guy. But, uh, wow, sorry. Wow, so nicely made. So what I'm going to do is I am going to try and make sure that I get the locations uh, between the, the fulcrum and the cable. So the, the lever arm is the same between these two. So I'm back to stock-ish throw, which is what I like. And uh, then the Dolomiti goes in. It's all installed. Goes pretty, pretty smoothly. This routing of the wiring harness is much more similar to the stock than it is to the shift R. So the wiring harness runs underneath the very bottom. Uh, this little guy holds it below the brake handle, and then it routes kind of stock on the side there with these two guys. Um, two. I don't know if you can see on their hoops that hold it in. Um, the uh, I had to find a couple of bolts. It comes with these bolts that are too long, so I had to find a couple of different bolts to uh, hold the brake handle in, but that works fine. Um, here's Let me take a little picture of the shift cable so you can see that they run on this side, so they run along this, this uh beam so that the brake uh, can move up and down and it won't chafe on those cables. Uh, I think that's it. goes together pretty easy. The shift works great. Um, like I said, I, I'm keeping it close to the stock throw so it feels very similar to the shift R. Very solid. Uh, no complaints so far. I'm going to put everything back together, console on, and um, it'll look back to, to very stock. This block that holds the shift cables is really cool. It's a two-piece aluminum block with a steel collar in it that holds on the location of the shifter, and there is no motion in there at all, so it, it holds very, very tightly. I was thinking about putting maybe some liquid electrical tape or, or a plastic dip or something just to make sure it's cushioned, but once I felt how tight that it was, there's no need to do that at all. So uh, there's that. And then all of these bolts are going into aluminum, so it's a, a bolt into aluminum, metal into metal, and so I've got blue Loctite on everything. Yeah, everything from the bolts that go into the chassis to the bolts that go into the shift mechanism, both uh, crossgate and and uh, shift. So, uh, and I uh, you, this thing comes assembled, but you actually have to take it apart to install it. Um, I took out every screw and and uh, put in blue Loctite in all of the screws just to make sure that. Everything is tight and will remain that way for a long time. Um, just a quick view here of how that cable harness is routed, and then also how the shift cables are routed. Notice that the shift gate and the cross gate are on top of each other all the way to the back which is different from the shift R on the shift R, they're next to each other pretty soon. So uh, it's a, it, the routing is just slightly different. The other thing that's a little different from the shift R I'll point out is that the cable harness is above the shift cables. It's not really easy to see, but the shift cables are right here. 
the cable harness goes up and is on, you can see it's on the driver's side on the left side of the cables, where on the shift R I actually had it um, on the other side of the shift cables. So there, like I said, there's, there's a little bit of a routing difference, but it's easy to, to reroute. Um, one thing to make sure you do, there's, th this actually should be done on the shift R as well. This guy has uh, dual centering springs. It's a pretty strong return to center. You don't want any tension on the neutral position of the transmission when this is neutral. So just uh, let this sit in its neutral position and bring the cable to that position. You should just uh, be able to screw the screw straight in when, when the cable is sitting here and, and there's no uh, force on that cable when you're screwing that screw in. You want, you want this to be totally relaxed when you're uh, putting that neutral position uh, screw in. In that way the springs don't fight the transmission and you're not going to have any wear issues on the transmission. Um, that You should do that with the shift R as well. Um, and then the, the shift gate, of course, uh, this is, is kind of loose forward and backward until you attach this, so, so it's not sensitive to that same kind of thing. To get the cross gate lever in exactly the right spot, you want the neutral, I'm sorry, the first and second gate to be aligned when the uh, uh, reverse lockout hits the stop. And that's a tuning item that uh, Manuel has in his uh, tutorial online uh, YouTube. I'll link that below. But you, uh, you, you definitely want to do a little fine tuning. And it's done with the neutral uh, spring rest, this beam right here that the, that the two neutral springs pivot on. This is actually on a cam, so it takes a little adjustment, but the main thing is that he's got it uh, very well detailed, um, so I won't go into much detail on that, but it's not a step to, to uh, skip. Another thing that I did, this probably doesn't show too, yeah, it shows a little bit. I angled the shifter a little bit backwards, or, or towards the, the back of the car. It's not completely vertical. Um, in the shift R, I did have it completely vertical. Um, but this brings it a little bit closer to the steering wheel. And I already test fit the console, and, and it clears everything. So um, so I think I like this, because it's just a little bit closer to the, to the steering wheel. And, a little less uh, hand motion. Um, the other thing to note here, uh, this, in this direction, take the hand brake down, you see the angle of the shifter. And that's very similar to stock, but not like the shift R. The shift R is much more vertical. In, in this design, the uh, lever wants to be canted towards the passenger side, it can't be vertical, at least the way um, this is designed, and, and that's actually the way that the stock system works as well. So uh, it, it works pretty good. I'm going to put the console back on, put the interior back in, and uh, follow up with some uh, impressions. So some final thoughts here on the Dolomiti shifter. It's really uh, high quality. I, um, again, really like the, the materials, the design. Uh, I like the machined aluminum features. Uh, it's, it's really nice quality. The function is excellent. I would say if I was blindfolded and I was put in a car with a Dolomiti or with a Shift R, um, I probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference. They're, they're essentially both really, really, really clean as far as shift quality goes, um, crispness, directness, it, it's all really good. Um, I think that uh, I, I kind of like the angle of the shifter away from the driver. It, you can see it's still uh, really close to the steering wheel, um, but it does give you extra leg room 
you and towing and that kind of thing, there's there's plenty of space, um, more so than the shift R. The me the reverse mechanism um, again is is very simple, um, a, a little bit more straightforward than the than setting up the shift R. I mean, you, you can kind of see the the motion of the base. It's it's there a little, but it, it's pretty minimal. And uh, there's you know a comfortable amount of weight into the shifts and, and everything. So, as far as the comparison to the shift quality goes, like I said, I, I don't think there's there's much in it. Uh, both are excellent, and, uh, and and I don't know that I would recommend one over the other. As far as the final final thing is, as far as the rattling goes, and I mentioned that I'm actually replacing the shift R because there's some rattling, and I believe it's generated in the transmission. And because everything's so stiff now, it gets uh, transmitted into the shifter, and I get some some rattling noise driving around. Still got it, so that didn't take care of the problem. It's about the same, um, maybe a little bit stronger in in the Dolomiti than it was in the Shift R, but uh, that's 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 not that significantly different. So um, so it didn't solve my problem. So I'm gonna be living with that. Um, but but overall, uh, I'm I'm really happy with this. I'm happy with the Shift R. I think both are are winners, and I don't think you can pick a a wrong one there.